Good evening and thank you for joining us. Welcome to another edition of Petroleum 101 with Mr. Kimal King, where we discuss all things oil and gas right here on Kaichur Radio. My name is Shakima Day, a reporter with Kaichur News, not an unfamiliar voice and face, and I will be your host this evening evening no now so before we begin tonight's program let me just remind you our loyal listeners and viewers as well as the newer ones that you can call us on 226-7453 or you can whatsapp us or send us a text message to 622-222 with your questions or comments and for those on the web you can visit kaito radio's facebook page where this program where this program is being live streamed and you are also free to shoot us a comment or a question uh, relating to tonight's show. So this evening we will be discussing a very important topic and that is political failures at transparency and I will be putting Mr. Kimal King, your usual host, on the hot seat and he will uh, take over tonight's discussion. So over to you Mr. King. Okay. <laughs> hi, Shakima, and hi, everybody else. I want to first ask you, Shakima, mm-hmm. and anyone else who wants to call in or send a message, what do you expect from your government when they say they're going to be transparent? Well, of course, I expect them to follow through with that uh, promise because, I mean, we elected those persons there to serve us and we fully well expect them to be truthful, be transparent in everything that they do Mm -hmm. because they are here to serve us. So, of course, we want them to keep us in the loop, let us keep us in the know. Would you say that the PPP or the AP and UAFC that one is more transparent than the other, one is more forthcoming with information on our oil and gas sector? It's That is a very tricky question because on one hand, we have the APNU AFC, uh, who I think Mr. Granger it was, who disclosed one of the most important uh, contracts we had. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were asking for this for a very long time. So I think uh, they have more of an up or they're up on a level over the PPP because, I mean, they have promised to do so much mm-hmm. in terms of being transparent, but they have not followed through. And the PPP hadn't been so forthcoming with the release of contracts mm-hmm. before the David Granger administration kicked in. Mm-hmm. But then I can, I can one-up that and I can tell you that AP and UAFC kept the production licenses for these oil developments in the dark wow. and it was the PPP government that when it came in that it released the production license that it handed out to Exxon Mobil mm. for the PIR project. So then we really can't uh, put like co- compare the two. Well, well that, that was just something for you to think of. So I'm going to discuss issues that we're facing with both of these major parties. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we have to talk about is that of the vice president and his failure to hold himself to commitments that he has made since he took office. Mm -hmm. So about two months ago, there was a press conference with the vice president, Dr. Barrett Jack Mm -hmm. And during that that press conference, this was shortly after the government approved the Payara Field Development Plan. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know what a field development plan is, when an oil company makes a discovery somewhere and they want to start producing oil or gas from that discovery, they have to submit a plan to the government who then has to sort through the plan and to determine a few things. Is this a feasible plan? Mm -hmm. Is it environmentally sound? Mm -hmm. How beneficial will it be for the country? Mm -hmm. Right? And so they go through this field development plan and then they may negotiate with the oil company and they'll say, 
I don't think this is a good term. Let's change it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can we can figure out so that we can both benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So the AP and UFC government, they had reviewed two field development plans. And those were? The Lisa Phase 1 plan mm -hmm. and the Lisa Phase 2 plan. Mm -hmm. And they approved both. Mm -hmm. When the PPP came in, it had to review the Payara field development plan. Mm -hmm. But this field development plan, it was submitted since before the PPP took office. Okay. Sometime late last year. Okay, wow. And so the David Granger administration had hired a firm called Bayphase mm -hmm. to review the plan. Kai Chor News had shown, however, that Bayphase was Hot a client days. of ExxonMobil. Wow. So when the PPP government came in, what it had to do was to take over the review. Mm -hmm. But it didn't rehire a new consultant they stayed to, to do over the whole review. So they, they hired someone to, to review Bayface's review and then to complete the review. That right? sounds very... Well, it's not that complicated. It's, it's a, it's a short Not complicated, but a bit fishy. In my opinion. Well, here's the fishy part that we get to. The person that was hired to spearhead the team was this woman from Canada. Her name is Alison Redford. Mm -hmm. And she has a very controversial past. She was the premier for the Canadian province of Alberta. Mm -hmm. The equivalent to say in, say, America, that would be maybe a governor. Mm -hmm. Right, And when she was there, she was forced to resign from her post because she had been found to mismanage public funds. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the person that the PPP hired to review the Payara Field Development Plan. And so we're on the topic of transparency. The PPP approved this project mm -hmm. after... This woman and her team did the review for six weeks, right? And one of the things that they said when the vice president had this press conference was that the Payara Field Development Plan, the production license, was superior to the ones that were approved by the AP and UEFC. How so? Well, he pointed to certain major environmental issues. So the issues floating around while the Payara permit was being reviewed were two things. The flaring of natural gas at ExxonMobil's current operations at Liza Phase 1 and the dumping of w produced water at the same operations. Can you explain a bit what is produced water for the listeners and viewers who might not be aware of that term? Okay. I, I, I do want to explain it, but I don't want to like move too much away from the, the main conversation okay. that we're having. So when oil companies produce oil, mm -hmm. it's not just the oil that's coming up. It's a lot of other things. It's mud and silt um, the chemicals that they've had to use to prepare the field and chemicals that, are, that have been in there for a very, very long time. So when it comes up, it's a lot of hot, hot water and it has a bunch of different chemicals in it that we don't know the effect it would have if we allow it to be released into the environment. What ExxonMobil has been doing since it started operating at the Lisa Phase 1, where it's, where it's producing oil since last December, it's been dumping that water into the ocean. And we have no idea what the effect of that would be. On the other hand, there's flaring of gas. Mm -hmm. That's gas that is inside the Lisa Phase 1 project with the oil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you d when you make a discovery you don't just discover oil. There's, there's gas in there. Or sometimes you may discover a gas field, which is substantially just gas. Mm -hmm. And the gas field, the gas that comes out, you'd call it non-associated gas. Mm -hmm. But if you get gas out of an oil field, you call it associated gas. Right? So 
I'm going to bring us back to so the transfer. <laughs> yeah. So these were the issues that the vice president w- was arguing the PPP government handled better than APNU. Than APNU, mm-hmm. APNU AFC. Mm-hmm. And he insisted that what the media should do is take the previous permits, the production licenses, and compare them, comb through them, and see what you think. You make a decision for yourself. Who is doing better, us or them? Mm-hmm. Right? And one of the things that Kaichor News, myself, actually pointed out to the vice president is that we don't actually have the production licenses because the former government has kept them secret. So when we said that, the vice president said that he would have them released. Mm -hmm. It has been two months and we don't have them released. So he did not honor his commitment. And I'd say Kaitra News has made attempts mm-hmm. to reach out to the relevant authorities to get these permits released. But that would be the EPA. Well, the, okay. When you approve uh, a field development, there is a production license, the main production license, and then there's the environmental permit because the EPA has to determine the environmental impact. Mm-hmm. So there are two permits. Um, So after he made the promise, we had reached out to the Ministry of Natural Resources to get the production license, right? And when you reach out to the Ministry of Natural Resources, the Ministry of Natural Resources will say, try GGMC, try the Department of Energy. Let me give you some numbers. You go to them and you'll get it. When you go to one agency, they'll say, try the other. When you go to the Department of Energy, they'll say... Oh, let's put you on to this specific official. This specific official, their number is ringing out or they're not in at the moment. Or let me take this information and I'll get back to you. So do we know the the main person these, permi- uh, these licenses are supposed to be with? The main agency? Th- that's it. There's this air of inefficiency and secrecy that surrounds the management of the oil and gas sector and has surrounded it for such a long time that when you think one official is responsible for something and you ask them they pivot to someone else so that's what we've had to deal with so it's been two months we have the payara production license and the payara environmental permit which came from the government but not the other permits. And have uh, you made any other attempts to try to put get your hands on these documents? Well, I have also attempted to get the environmental permits mm-hmm. from the EPA. So I had been in contact with the head of the EPA, Ms. Sharifa Razak, for quite some time. I would say way over a month now. And this, that is on getting information about flaring. Mm-hmm. This there's also a, an issue here when it comes to the release of this kind of information. The EPA receives reports from the um, the oil company on the status of flaring every week, mm-hmm. and we know the oil company Exxon Mobil has been flaring gas at its operations since last year, and that's a huge problem. Mm-hmm. And it has been so difficult for you to get updates like that. And it was after quite a few weeks that I finally got a report from the head of the EPA on the status of flaring, right? And so so this is what we've had to deal with when we want to get information from the government who has come into office saying, we're going to be transparent, we're going to be um, forthcoming with everything we do, but you're not actually getting that when you when you get into the thick of things. You're just getting promises. And I see how that can be hard for journalists because you have to take that information and uh, break it down for the uh, layman to understand what is going on in the country. That's right. And if you don't have that information, how can you do your job? That's right. So we, how can we, what can we do to uh, uh, bring a change? 
I mean, I as a journalist, the only power I have is to write a story. <laughs> and I, I think that's a lot of power. You get to crap the whip on the backs of politicians <laughs> and tell the people that they're not doing what they said they would do. So we've been writing, complaining to the people that look, the persons you hired, they are not doing what they said they'd do. Uh, so, as a matter of fact, this story mm-hmm. on on the issue, on another issue, um, actually the issue we just talked about mm-hmm. is is going to be carried mm-hmm. in our paper. Another issue that's in today's paper is about another promise that an official has made w- related to the oil sector that uh-huh. they have not kept. I know so that. So this mm-hmm. is the Minister of Natural Resources, mm-hmm. Mr. Vikram Bharat. Mr. Barrett, a few weeks before the PPP approved the Payara project Mm -hmm. in September, told my colleague, Kiana Wilberg, that the findings of the Payara review will be made public. And these are the findings made by Ms. Redford. Ms. Redford, Mm -hmm. right. So when the PPP approved the project, they released, like I said, the production license Mm -hmm. and the environmental permit, Mm -hmm. but not the findings of the Canadian consultant. Mm -hmm. And there are many... This is problematic for many reasons. And I'm going to point out again uh, what the Canadian consultant said about flaring and produced water Mm -hmm. is extremely important. Because obviously the Canadian consultant can recommend one thing Mm -hmm. in her review and the government can do whatever they want in their production Mm -hmm. license, right? Or the the consultant can recommend one thing and the government can can do it. Mm -hmm. So there is that uncertainty there where we don't know what's happening. So we need to see the findings of this and it's not that Kaitra News is calling on the government and saying release 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 this is something that you told us you would do yes exactly you made a promise to be transparent but then you're not following through so how do you expect people to take your word and trust you to run the country and run one of the most uh hefty sectors in Guyana how can uh the citizens trust you to do that if you can't be honest that's right and so One of the things that you'd hear when you speak about the lack of transparency in one administration or one political party is, well, let's try the other. Mm -hmm. There's no, you're not going to get a better chance with the other. So let's talk about the opposition. We had spoken to the opposition leader, Mr. Joseph Mm Harmon. Months ago, I think you were in that press conference. Yes, I was at the very first press conference where he promised to uh, release some oil and gas information to uh, some to some answers to some questions that we've been asking for a very long time. And he said that he would reveal it at an oil, oil and gas specific press conference. But how long has it been since uh, Mr. Harmon made that promise? Let me see. I think. It's three months. Three months. So this had when when the opposition leader had this press conference, it had already been a while since the new government had taken office, and the opposition leader had assumed his post mm-hmm. because he was previously um, at the Ministry of the Presidency mm-hmm. as the Director General. Mm-hmm. So being there, you would be in a position where you have access to a lot of information that could help the public, the public that wants to know what's going on with this sector that is being kept so hushed, Mm -hmm. right? So we asked the opposition leader, why is it that the opposition has been so silent recently on what is going on in the oil sector? We see you and the AFC having press conferences and talking about a variety of issues, but on the sector that is the most lucrative, the Mm -hmm. sector that's supposed to boost Guyana into prosperity, into the first world, Mm -hmm. you're not talking about it. And you want to know why. And the opposition leader said, you know, we're not silent. We are concerned about what's happening in the sector. 
and we are going to speak out at a certain time. At the time, we were asking the opposition leader also about what happened with the Kanji and Kaitra mm-hmm. blocks. These were some suspicious awards that were done by the PPP government, the Donald Ramatar administration, just weeks prior to, to the, the 2015 elections, mm-hmm. which saw that government being unseated by the David Granger coalition. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Harmon, being at the Ministry of the Presidency, mm-hmm. Not just as Director General, but before that, he served a quite a few years as the Minister mm-hmm. of State. So, for you to understand the position that Mr. Harmon was in, Mr. Harmon had responsibility, wide reaching authority over all of the departments that would have come under the Ministry of the Presidency. Mm-hmm. The Department of Energy? Including mm-hmm. the Department of Energy, right? And the Department of Energy had been stripped out. That portfolio had been stripped from the former Minister of Natural Resources, Raphael Trotman. Mm -hmm. And so it was there at the Ministry of the Presidency. And at the time, there was so much controversy when that government was in office. And what was happening is that SARA was conducting an investigation, the State Assets Recovery Mm -hmm. Agency, which is now defunct. And then there's also Global Witness, which came out with a report Stating, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stating what we knew about Exxon Stabrook block deal, how bad it is, and also issues arising with the awards of the Kanji and Kaitra Mm -hmm. blocks. The international anti-corruption watchdog said that there were so many red flags Mm -hmm. in these awards that it warranted a proper investigation. And nothing came from that investigation that was being done by Sarah, you would think that a minister of state who has wide-reaching authority over the Department of Energy would be able to understand what happened. We have the former presidential advisor, Dr. Yan Mangal, who had said that there is enough in the public. Mm -hmm. There's enough that we know that we could have rescinded those oil blocks. And I believe that he said, uh, too, that Mr. Granger had uh, the authority to rescind those blocks, but he did not. Uh, And he said it was very disappointing that he didn't. So coming back to Mr. Harmon as opposition leader, that's just to say that he was in a position to know a lot. Mm -hmm. And now he's coming as opposition leader and saying he doesn't know. When we asked the question, Mr. Harmon said... I am getting information from someone overseas. Mm-hmm. That's the first instance, yeah. And and it's actually very daunting to hear that because you were Minister of State. You don't have to get information from someone overseas. You had the information at hand. You had the authority. So how come you don't know? And And here's why there are a lot of people who may think that the coalition government was complicit in this giveaway. Mm -hmm. So after a block is awarded to a company, sometimes the company decides, I can't hold this license alone. I may need a partner here to help me Mm -hmm. to drill or produce or whatnot. So the company finds someone else and that someone else would farm into the block with them. Mm -hmm. They'll pay you a sum of money so they can get the rights to come in. And they might even bring in a third or a fourth. So, And then this is the case with both the Kanji and Kaitra blocks. After the initial recipient got the blocks, they had people come farm in. And you cannot just farm into a country's national asset without getting the approval of the government. Mm -hmm. So while the initial award was made by the PPP, it's the AP and UAFC that lorded over the transfer of rights. Mm -hmm. And that is why there are some people who are concerned about the AP and UAFC maybe having been complicit in what happened there. Actually, it was Global Witness in its report that said that senior government officials within the coalition government Mm -hmm. may have 
stonewalled the investigation of the State Assets Recovery Agency. And you'd ask the question now, why would you do that? They were investigating the PPP. Well, not the PPP, but the award process the for pops, possible yes. corruption. Mm -hmm. Why would you stonewall such an investigation? Mm -hmm. And all of these things we brought to the opposition leader. Mm -hmm. And there's not much that he could have told us. And so we've been waiting on this oil and gas press conference for so long. And there's no oil and gas press conference. If I can add to, I, uh, I was at another press conference with Mr. Harmon where he said clearly that he was relying on Kaitur News' information on the uh, Kaitur and Kanji blocks. Mm -hmm. He was relying on our information to, uh, because he said, and I, if I remember clearly, he said that we, know, we knew more than him. And it was very interesting to hear that come from a senior government official who had the access to all of this information. It was, it's, it's, it's shocking, it's, it's concerning because these are the people who we had elected mm -hmm. to serve us. And basic, uh, basic, tran basic transparency they can't uphold. Mm -hmm. So if my publisher was here, Mr. Law. He'd have some very colorful Call words for to say <laughs> yes. in response to that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Kaitur News has been on a, a sustained campaign against corruption mm -hmm. and trying to find out what went wrong with the awards of the Kanji and Kaitur blocks. And during that couple week period where we published a series of articles clearly mapping out the corruption red flags here. No government official would hazard to say what went wrong. Mm -hmm. And if I can interject too, the, the vice president himself said that he believed that the awards of the Kai Chur and Kanji blocks, there was no corruption and nothing went wrong. Um, I'll expound on that a little. The vice president said that he knows... Donald Ramatar, the former president. Mm -hmm. So he can say that nothing went wrong based on his knowledge of Mr. Ramatar's character. He also said that he has requested a series of documents from government agencies in order to determine whether something went wrong here. And there's an obvious conflict there that you're saying you're checking to see if something went wrong here. And then you're saying, I don't I think anyone, anything went wrong here. And then you're saying, I know this guy who is under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's my friend. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anything went wrong. A clear conflict of interest. What do you expect someone to say of their, their cohort, mm -hmm. you know? You wouldn't say something bad about them. Of course them. not. And I think that is why people are calling, have been calling for an international probe to be conducted into the award of the Kaichur and Kanji, th of those blocks. Because a, a proper investigation cannot be done by a government agency that is heavily controlled mm -hmm. by politicians. And this is what happened with SARA under the APNU AFC as mm -hmm. well. That's why we need an international investigation that has the access and the independence to do a proper investigation. Mm -hmm. And we see this happening in so many other oil producing nations where they, the officials who are found engaging in corrupt practices, they are brought before the courts and they're rightfully sanctioned for being involved in illegal actions why is this not happening here that is it so at this point we will take a very short commercial break and we will be right back do stay tuned
If you've just joined us, you are tuned in to Petroleum 101 on Kaito Radio with myself, Shakima Day, and Mr. Kimal King. So before we went on our break, we were discussing uh, government's failure to be uh, transparent in the oil and gas sector. And we will continue our discussion. So I'll hand you over to Mr. Kimal King. Okay, Shakima. So one of the ways that oil producing countries have to improve the management of their oil and gas sector is this international mechanism called the EITI, mm-hmm. right? That's the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. So because it has been so recognized that the oil oil sector is infamously corrupt that there's so much money going through this sector that you have to watch out and you have to maintain certain levels of transparency to ensure that you are a militant regulator against corruption they started this extractive industries transparency initiative and what this body does is it finds the best mechanisms that countries can implement in order to keep their their oil sector clean and transparent mm-hmm. and they say to their to the member states these are the principles that you have to uphold so guyana joined this initiative um a few years ago um. and because of guyana's membership there guyana has certain principles it has to uphold and what are some of those principles one of the main principles that we have not upheld yet is for the release of all beneficial owners so i'll explain to you what beneficial owners are um in an oil company or in any company Mm -hmm. there are the employees but there are also the owners the owners are the people who ultimately benefit from the, the wealth of the company. Mm-hmm. So, for example, we have Mid-Atlantic Oil and Gas that mm-hmm. received the Kanji block. Mm-hmm. We understand that the sole shareholder of that um, company is a guy named Idris Duki, mm-hmm. Kamal Idris Duki, mm-hmm. right? And so, so that's what a beneficial owner is. Okay. And it's important for you to know who the beneficial owners of a company are because we have politicians who may want to get their hands on these national assets. Mm -hmm. And it is a conflict for you to be a regulator or in a political position that lords over the sector Mm -hmm. when you are interested in getting your hand on the national Mm -hmm. asset. So in order for us to make sure that politicians don't have their hands on our oil blocks, we have to know who the beneficial owners of these companies are so the eiti said that one of the main prerequisites for membership there is that you have to tell us who your beneficial owners Mm -hmm. are and it is the government's job to get those beneficial owners Mm -hmm. would you imagine that a government would give a national asset to a company without knowing who the beneficial owners are. As, as my publisher says, that would be very crazy. That would be very crazy, right. And that is what has happened. So, the Guyana now is in a position where it has to r- report to the EITI mm-hmm. the beneficial owners of the oil blocks. Not just the oil blocks, but mining contracts and so on. Mm-hmm. And we have until the end of the year to do that. And if we default, what are some of the implications of that? Well, that definitely threatens our membership Mm -hmm. in EITA. Because you can't want to be a part of an international transparency initiative that that is giving you uh, the the stamp of transparency. Mm -hmm. The stamp saying you're upholding principles of integrity Mm -hmm. and not abide by the principles Mm -hmm. so obviously what would happen there is if we don't meet that deadline then the eiti has every right to come to again and say your membership here we could revoke it Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to seriously consider that. Another one of the things is that the EITI requires that contracts be made public. So a few years ago, the former president, David Granger, he actually released the oil contracts. Mm -hmm. But this was after a lot of public calls mm -hmm. and criticisms were made because we had that whole situation where the former minister, Raphael Trotman, he signed the contract and it was a very bad contract. Mm -hmm. And there were many officials in that administration that did not want it to be released. So he caved and released the contract. He caved. Um, my publisher, Mr. Lal, would say that he did something a man of integrity would do and release the contract. But you? I won't hazard. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have the oil contracts out in the open. However, the extractive industries is more than just oil. Mm -hmm. Mining, bauxite, forestry. So we have the mining contracts, which are under wraps. Mm -hmm. So many mining contracts for these large-scale foreign firms. And one of the issues that we have in getting those contracts public is that they are riddled with confidentiality clauses. Mm -hmm. Very well hidden. Right? And, and that's a problem. How do we want to maintain our membership inside this body? And we are allowing companies to bind the government to confidentiality provisions. There's so much that can go wrong if you are forced to be confidenti confidential about the terms of an agreement. Mm -hmm. There could be collusion between political actors mm -hmm. and the executives of those companies. And that is why it's so important that you release the contracts. That's why it's so important that you release the beneficial owners Everything has to be out in the open. And so many people don't understand that. Transparency, uh, I believe, should be very important to governments. And, but I don't think that it is very important right now because we've been asking for so many things and we've been asking so many questions. And all we have uh, received is silence from our politicians. Complete silence. Mm -hmm. So that has brought us... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that has brought us to the end of this evening's program. I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. But you can join us next week, same time, same place, for another edition. Uh, Mr. Kimo King, do you have any closing comments? I want to say that the topics that I talk about here every Tuesday, they are to educate you, the public, on the basics of the oil and gas sector, how your leaders are managing your wealth, but it's not just for you to sit and listen to and then go to sleep and do nothing. Mm -hmm. It's for you to call your representatives and tell them, let them hear what you want. Let it not just come from Kaichor News. Mm -hmm. We want to get the information to you, but there's going to be a lot of resistance unless you meet your leaders and you say that they should be more transparent. We the people have the power. And with that, we end tonight's program. Thank you so much for joining us. And do join us again next week, same time, same place on Kaicho Radio.